What a difference a week makes. We've yeah, gone yeah. from uh, Just the bank. Sure. plow trucks running around last weekend to ice cream trucks running down my yes. street yesterday. <laughs> different set of muscles. So, enough of the, enough of the current events of weather. Let's say 333. 333. talking about you last night, saying that uh, you took a train trip. How many train trips did you take to the West Coast? One, two, three. I said, I thought you said three, and that you had a good time. So the wife and I want to do it once, a short one, to see if we like it, and then maybe do something like that. 
Yeah, I thought that maybe it'll be. Just avoid California. What, where did you go? Oh, up to north? Washington State. That's what I thought. Washington the state of Washington. The top. Okay. That sounds like fun. And you have a bus across the river too. Yeah, uh, travel. A tour bus, huh? Yeah. Anybody else want to put something on the prayer list before we go any further? Just well, I'll see you. I have not. And uh, Dana. And Dana? I did not see Dana this week. I saw him last week. Dana's eyes. And he's got more than just that, but but that's the main thing. Yes, sir. Robin's traveling. She's in Pennsylvania right now. Okay. There are notes now in the back, and uh, in your Bibles, the paragraph markings have stopped, so we don't make outlines according to the paragraph markings. See? And they stopped in what, Acts uh, 17, Acts 18. I think Acts 18 is where they stopped. Publishers of the King James Bible on well, give England. Me, give me some uh, differences. Uh, right, the paragraph markings. I've uh, never seen that. Yeah. So, especially the spelling. Taking out the use out of an important words like Savior. Well, there's a difference between the English spelling of uh, Savior and the Renegade Americans and American. And so, it, it, when we say English, we, we mean British. So it would be a savior. Give me another word that's the same thing. O U R. Color. Color. C O L O U R. Favor. For you, a favor. F A V O U R. Flavor. Honor. Honor. Yeah, that would be another one. H O N O U R. You're going to find that's the way it's spelled. 
Okay. In, the, in the King James Bible. Now, if you look up the word in, in a Webster, uh, look up honor, O H O N O R. You probably will not find the H O N O U R. They'll list it under honor, but they list it at the either the beginning or the end. British spelling. They'll say British spelling, and they'll spell out that. Uh, how come the nurse rules? I never seen all that. Pardon? I've never seen any of that. Yeah, because today everything's dumbed down. You know, they just don't bother with that. How is son spelled in a King James Bible? The old way. That's the way. You're the, the son of God. How is son spelled? Capitalized only? Uh, you know, I, it may not be capitalized. S-O-N-E. It could be S-O-N-E or it could be S-O-N double N. S O N N E. Go ahead. Yeah, there wasn't uh, standardized spelling of words until dictionaries started coming out like in 1820, 1830. Um, so that's another that's another possibility too. Why you know it's O U R. It was standardized spelling. Yeah, not until Webster's and I forget who wrote the first English dictionary in, in Great Britain. But until then, it was like any anything goes. It, any anything went, you know, phonetically, whatever. Phonetically, it was spelled, so anything mm -hmm. went. So, to answer the question on the paragraph marking, the paragraph marking ends Acts twenty. That's where it ends. But I have to check it out in that Bible. After that, it's the publisher who's doing it, and that is not uh, has has nothing to do with the words themselves. Has nothing to do with the words themselves. Uh, Brother uh, uh, Paul had brought up what was that? The word for the day. Just give me the word for the day. Pythagoras. Pythagorean. Pythagorean. Pythagorean tuning. Yeah. Now let me explain it in a nutshell. Don't correct me if I'm wrong. Why? <laughs> Is there was. Not say it again. Pythagorean tuning. There was not a standard tuning back in Bach and Beethoven or pre that. And then when the piano to make the piano right, so that you get everybody to carry around the same interested instrument, they standardized 440. We'll just say they standardized 440 A as the standard so that all the instruments could now be geared around. It's just like the standard spelling. So three, four, five, five hundred years ago. And then now, now Brother Will, uh, well, let's see, Brother uh, uh, Allwood had said something interesting is something about the, what's, what's that rocker? Buddy Holly. Not Buddy Holly, you said another one. Richie Valens? Richie Valens? No. The rock. Jimmy Hendrix. Jimmy, you mentioned Jimmy Hendrix. Is before or around that time, even if it was lost first people's music, it made sense. The way it was it, it was it, it made sense so that it was still pretty or listenable to. Pleasant to hear. Pleasant to hear. And then he said they added something to it. Man, no matter what I hear, anything I hear, it's noise. Square waves and, and, and he said, feet. this is why it is noise. I'm not going to get into the details. That all of it today is noise. No matter where you're on the radio, unless you get one of those old stations that play the old music. The old music was pretty, even if it was lost music. You know, whether it's hymns or lost music, if they're singing in the bars, it's at least, you can follow it. But today, it, it, it's pure noise. Even the themes are bad. Even the things are bad. It's pure noise. Yeah. And these young people are listening to it thinking that they're, I don't know what they're thinking. Well, it's, but it's pure noise. It's all noise. And, and he made mention as to why, I don't know, he must have been listening to some kind of special. That's why Barbara doesn't listen to the radio because she was crazy. <laughs> well, man, I have to be, I have to have some music going. But man, when I, and, and then when they, when they, do these trailer, these songs as a warm up for the news, and there's actually singing to it. What well, I don't even know what they're singing to. It's it's so it's mm -hmm. a racket. Mm -hmm. But there there's a method to the rackedness. Is why it's racket. 
I, I don't know. I don't know if it's true or not, but it makes good sense to me because it meant to me it's just racket. Social engineering. All right, back to this social engineering. Yeah, we're getting it all ready for the Antichrist to invite him right into the church and so on. Contains 35 verses. I already told you that if, if we have our uh, uh, one of my instructors, if there's 35 verses, he's got 35 points. The, the reason this fella did this, uh, that, that was his style. It's, it's overdone when you have that many uh, points. But it's to uh, uh, prepare the preacher to outline, to make these outlines because people follow outlines. There's a system to this. It's just not random, all right? It, it, there's a system to it because every every chapter has a uh, has a topic, and what are the subpoints of this topic, and so on. The outline. All right, and then uh, in front of you, you've got this outline. Uh, <clears throat> the confrontation of Paul. Paul is under arrest. He's going to confront or uh, stand before the Sanhedrin, these seventy elders and make his presentation. So the confrontation before the council, he presents his case. If you look at your list there, it, 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 there are, the, the lessons are in the back there if you don't have one. That he's making his case like an attorney. And we have said in the past, and I, I learned in school that in the book of Romans, Paul writes Romans, he makes his, his chapter by chapter presentation. Do anybody remember how many chapters is the presentation to justify salvation by grace. Anybody recall? Chapters 1 through, uh, one more, Cha I believe chapter 8. Then chapter 9, 10, 11 is all about Israel. Then 12, 13, 14, 15, uh, 16 chapters is all practical things is how we are to get along. <clears throat> how he ends it. But his presentation and systematically making a case. So when the attorney goes to school, uh, uh, one, of the, one of the teachers said that there is a school that trains attorneys and they use, one of them actually uses Romans as to how Paul makes his presentation. And so you make this step-by-step -step presentation. You want to make your case. And if you're, uh, if you're unable to make your case, if you do a lot of uh, fist slamming, you don't make your case. If, uh, uh, let's say they make their final plea uh, before the jury, uh, before the jury, you have the defense and you have the uh, prosecution. If one is soft-spoken, j just, just the tone of voice, soft-spoken, Systematically making his case, uh, and the other one is pounding his fist. Which which is going to be more persuasive? This soft voice. That, I guess it's a proof of that. The soft, persuasive voice is more better than the attorney that's doing this, the fist slamming. And so, so you, they they have to learn these techniques, you know. But in, in, in law, it's it comes down to this: Are they guilty or not? Right? Are they guilty or not? And uh, I hate to be, would hate to be in a jury where a man would be tough, tough to tell. Are they guilty? You know? Well, anyway, the, the, here's the, uh, he appeals, uh, the, he, he's, he's going to make his, there's the confrontation comes, he addresses the counsel, he makes his case, he talks about the conscience, the commandment, and then he uses his cleverness to pick one group against another, the Pharisees against the Sadducees. Uh, the care of Paul, because uh, they were going to, uh, it begins in verse 10, they're going to pull him apart. And then the conspiracy, now, now he's back at the castle, and a conspiracy to kill Paul has been revealed. And then the concern, the nephew intervenes on his behalf. It's confided in the centurion. He gives a charge to escort Paul to safety, and they conduct him there with these soldiers and horsemen, and then he is constrained, the constraint of Paul, he is jailed in another location, so he is protected there.
Uh, so that is our outline. Father, bless now our, our lesson today, and that it would just bear fruit for the believing now. In Christ's name, amen. So it begins in verse 1, and we've already looked at this. Paul earnestly beholding the counsel. Uh, the idea here is uh, he's not dreading making the case. He's looking forward to making his case. Now, you know, for some of us, or most of us, we might be dreading it. I mean, we've got to, there's this confrontation. You know, people don't like confrontation. They do whatever they can to avoid that. They make excuses, 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 excuses. And, uh, but confrontation, you know, for, for children, uh, let, let's take a child as an example. Part of child rearing is getting them into a position of, uh, of confrontation. And it helps them to grow up. Uh, my, uh, probably by the time I was in junior high, I was running the shop. My, my dad would put me in a position where I would have to do the confronting or dealing with the customers. So by the time I was near the end of junior high, I could already talk to people, be able to discuss things with people, where other people go through their whole life and they never have been put in that position. It, it, it isn't bad to put your children in situations where they will be confronted because that, uh, folks, that's what life is. Life is tough. <clears throat> then they run for office. Yeah, then they run for office. <clears throat> but we have to, uh, you put them in positions, it's kind of like, it's, it's like a musical instrument. If you just play, uh, give me an easy song. Row, row, row your boat. If all you do is practice row, row, row your boat, you're going to get pretty good at it. Do you, do you advance that way? You start that way. Row, row, row your boat. Is the, the instructor that gives the net, this is the, you know, as you go through a booklet, it gets a little harder, a little harder, you know, to challenge them to reach higher. And then when you can't do it, you play it over and over again to challenge you to, it, it builds character. It, 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 with an instrument, it builds skill. With this type of confrontation, it builds character. And so the more confrontation you have, some of those people can't handle that. They're at war with their neighbors. I've never been at war with my neighbor that I can think of. You know, let's say they drive over my grass. Oh, well. I don't go over there and sound off. Oh, well. I just accept. I, I, I don't have these fights. I, I'm not going to have a fight over silly stuff. <laughs> silly stuff. So uh, he's looking forward, he's earnestly looking forward to defending himself. Now listen, I looked it up in the dictionary, what it means. It means determined. He's eager. He's zealous. Deep sincerity, feeling, and serious. He's serious about this. All right? He probably wants the uh, opportunity to uh, tell them the gospel message. All right, now, our second one was the council. He is addressing the council now. The council shows up in Acts 4, Acts 5, Acts 6, and here in Acts 23. <clears throat> and anywhere the council appears, anywhere the council appears, is it good or is it bad? It's always bad. It's never good. Uh, the, uh, so what council is there, the main, main one for, uh, what do they call that in religion? The council of... Uh, council of churches. The council of churches. Is that good or is that bad? It's never been considered good. No, it's it's never, bad. well, by certain people. By us, it's considered bad. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it, it's what the... Uh, what the devil would have, that there's, there's, uh, we're all right. We all kind of live blab and, until no one knows. Well, you want to get to heaven by getting baptized? Well, that's okay. You want to get to, I mean, there's no definite line. Folks, the, the, the Bible's black and white. Right? So that these councils, 
that are formed in the end are never any good. Never any good. The National Council of Dead Churches. The, the National Council of Dead Churches. Right? Dedicated, World Council. De dedicated to destroying the truth in the name of religion. In the name of religion. And we looked, we looked up these verses. I don't feel led to look them up. We looked them up the last time we met two weeks ago. It's made up of generally these 70. Oh, and I did say I was going to look up at where they ate. And I didn't do that. Uh, Luke 10 is where they show up. Uh, numbers is when they're numbered. He was to get to 70 elders. And remember, Jesus, uh, it's just God ate with the elders, the 70 elders on the mountain. And so when God eats with the elders on the mountain in the Old Testament, who is God there? Who is God? It's got to be Jesus. It can't be God because God is a God is a spirit. So they can't be eating with God. They have to be eating with the manifestation of God. So then who buries Moses? God, it says God buried Moses. Then who buried Moses? Jesus Christ buried Moses. Because Jesus is God. By the way, is Jesus the Almighty? Yeah. He's called the Almighty in Revelation chapter 1. He is the Almighty. All right? All right, so there's the 70, and he does eat with, Jesus does eat with the 70 elders on the mountaintop. He makes his case. He's going to make his case. Paul makes his case, but it is the shortest case he makes it. He speaks in verse 1, verse 3, verse 5, and verse 6. Every time he opens his mouth, he's interrupted. Don't you just hate that? When it's your turn to speak or you want to say something and, and they jump to the conclusion, they already assume what you're going to say. And they shut you down before you finish your sentence. I, I just I just hate that. Is, uh, what's nice about, I, I tell the wife, what's nice about preaching is when uh, 11 o'clock comes and when I start my sermon, when I start it, no interruptions, please. What do I say? How many preachers at a time? One preacher at a time. I get to talk until, <laughs> until I'm done. That's it. that's one of the pluses of this. You know, I we love to cough. Oh, uh oh, oh, there, there is. <laughs> well, you can't even cough. All right. So, uh, and he's interrupted every time. Now, some of these talk shows do that, and we we notice it, and they do have complaints about that on Fox. Is the host of the show? He's interviewing something, somebody. They're giving an answer. He wants to move. You know, he's got this segment and it's already divvied up in time. He interrupts them, never lets them finish, and they go on to the next topic. And they do get complaints about that. So if, when you're irritated by that, it, uh, you're not the only one. They do get official uh, call-ins about that. So the case, he, and he's not permitted to finish. What he wants to say. The conscience. The first word out of Paul's mouth. Uh, he, he brings that up. I have lived in all good conscience. It was a big part of his life. And again, we, we covered this last time. I, we're not going to look it up. Romans 9, 1 Timothy 1, Acts 24. Folks, you want to have a good conscience. You want to have a good conscience. If you have a bad conscience, it makes it tough to uh, sleep. The farther back, yes. Why did he get smacked in the mouth just from that statement? Uh, you're not permitted to ask this. No, no, no. No, I, uh, 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 let, let's, let's see if we're going to get there. He gets smacked, wait a minute. First thing he said it all the time. I know. Why? Or the way he said it. Page five on my notes. We'll, we'll, we'll oh, okay. we haven't got to that. Okay. All right. Yes. But uh, touche. He says it back to the high priest. So he's he's speaking for contrary to the law. So he's smitten. Uh, Paul is hit contrary to the law, against the law. And, but we'll get to that. 
we'll, we'll get to that. We may not get to that today, but we're going to get to it on my page three. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, conscience, it takes, oh, th th this is good. I read this someplace. It takes but a moment to say about his conscience, but it takes a lifetime to live to be able to live this. It takes a moment to say in all good conscience. But it takes a lifetime to live. Now, if you have a bad conscience or you've done things that you shouldn't, folks, have we all done things? Come on. Because, hey, we're not sinners. The farther it's in the rearview mirror, that you tend to forget it. Almost to the point that, did I really do that? Right? And you, and, and you did. I mean, we've done, uh, people have done dumb things when they're in grade school, junior high, high school. College, dumb things. Right? And so you may have a bad conscience that the, the closer it is that you have done it, the more it, it works on your conscience. But the further back it is, it tends to get more and more intense. <clears throat> now, Paul always kept, well, <clears throat> what gave him a bad conscience? He said that all good conscience. If he had a bad conscience, what, what would have given him a bad conscience? If anything. Yeah, which was which was Christ himself. He said, you, you're, uh, you're persecuting me, Paul. Is that he, and he called himself what kind of a sinner? Chief. Uh, Chief. Yeah, in fact, it's uh, with this verse, Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. I think this is where he says he was the chiefest of sinners because he persecuted the church. And Jesus himself says, you're persecuting me. Right? But he found grace because he did it in ignorance and unbelief. And he did it in ignorance, unbelief. And so at that point, he was still doing it in good conscience. He did it in ignorance and unbelief. And God, God is most gracious. Amen. Alright, so uh, the inner part of the man that discerned responsibility in reference to moral truth, uh, the, the tree of knowledge, knowing good and evil. Uh, Romans 2.15, I think this is probably about where we broke off. They bit, they now have this knowledge. In Romans 2.15, it says the Ten Commandments, the commandments are written, already written in the fleshly tables of the heart. Between the restraint of the Holy Spirit and the Ten Commandments being already written in the fleshly tables of the heart of every man and woman is what keeps this world from going nuts. <clears throat> As this big restraint. Question, is the conscience a reliable guide? Yet, it, this is where we left it off. Nope. It said, well, <clears throat> yes, for it senses good and evil, right and wrong. But no, in the sense that continual sinning and willful disobedience harms the conscience. So that it becomes, as it says, and let's go ahead and look these up now. This is where we left off last time. <clears throat> Titus. It becomes defiled. Titus 1.15 uh, Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. Uh, so uh, they get, as, as it says in 1 Timothy 4.2, they get a seared conscience. 1 Timothy 4.2, a seared conscience. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. So, what was it? Uh, a month ago, in, uh, in the state legislature, a month or two ago, in the state legislature of uh, New York, New York, New York, New York City, New York, New York the, state, state. the state of New York, and they cheered, is after the baby is born, you can kill it. Yeah. Folks, those are people that have a seared conscience. They have a seared conscience. How can, with, with that in mind then, how can anybody be a Democrat? I mean, how can you be? Folks, we've had people here who are staunch Democrats, man. 
just that one issue would be enough to make anybody with that's got a, a, a good conscience jump ship. Just what? I, I've had people that I, I've had people argue with me about this, <laughs> and they'll they'll say, uh, "Wow, there's been Republicans, and, and the reference then are to the Bushes, Bush this and Bush that." Well, they're in there, and and, and, uh, and these are people that aren't thinking. They're, they're not thinking straight. They say, well, why is it, well, if you have Republicans in there, so they tell me why. Why is abortion still legal? Well, then why is abortion still legal with Republicans as the president? It's got to be overturned by the court. Exactly. Well, if, this, if, if you're so smart, then why can't people pick it? What did you figure that out? But they can. They can. They cannot figure it out. Folks, the church is made up of a lot of weird stuff. Weird stuff. Uh, Jeremiah 17, 9. As I was downtown street preaching, I said, the Bible says a man 2,000 face did this. I wanted to start with this verse, Jeremiah 17, 9. The Bible says that we was street preaching. We were there for the October fest at the beer blast. And uh, 2,000 people are looking at me, and man, I just like, uh, I, I drew a blank. What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? And uh, I, I started the verse. It says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. <laughs> Who can know it? Here's how it came out. The deceitfulness of the heart. It was so twisted. I, I, I was like, I, I couldn't believe what I was saying. It was just all twisted. Because I, I lost my nerve. I lost my nerve. The heart is deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Folks, when you have a, when you have a twisted mind and a, and a defiled conscience seared, uh, man, then you can go ahead and kill me. It's okay. In fact, it's, it's your right and your choice. And these libertines are, are up the deep end, man. The conscience needs instruction. Oh, by the way, what is the best instruction booklet? The only instruction booklet out there. And ain't Dr. Spock. And you young people have no idea what we're talking about, Dr. Spock. Well, what is the instruction booklet? It's the Bible. That's your instruction booklet. Uh, by the way, where were they aborting babies? A New York style. Where were they aborting babies? New York style. In Egypt, in chapter and verse. Exodus chapter 1 and, uh, and in there, uh, probably about verse 10. All right? And what did those women, the midwives, do? They lied. I, I, there are people that try to twist that. I've heard, well, they really didn't like Man, they lied right through their, their teeth. Is it okay to lie? Yeah. It's okay to lie when, it, when it, it comes down to that. I mean, it is okay to lie. And, and did God bless them for it? Yeah. And God blessed them for it. And how did he bless them for it? To love her. He gave them houses, built houses for them, for those men like. You want a new house? <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. You want a brand new house in a plush area? Well, do some lying in a good way for the Lord. He didn't make you get a new house. <laughs> they got to do that. <clears throat> Paul's conscience before salvation. Acts 26. Acts 26, verse 9. I'm just going to have to... Uh, Trust in what we have down here for us. I barely thought with myself. You know, one thing to do, uh, probably not to do is think with yourself, right? Use and think with yourself. That I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. All right? And, and he thought he was doing okay. Uh, Philippians 3. 
uh, verses 4 through 6. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, see where his confidence was, any other man thinketh that he had where he might trust in the flesh, I mourn. All right, he was a good Pharisee. Circumcised the eighth day. In the end, doesn't mean anything. Of the stock of Israel, doesn't mean anything. But see, with, with before you're saved, these things mean a lot. Before you're saved. Before you're saved. Where are you going? Uh, you're, you're the All-American. You never robbed a bank. You didn't do a stick up a hole up and rob a bank. You never killed anybody. Well, where are you going? Before you're saved. Pardon? No. You think you're going to heaven? I didn't kill anybody. I, you know, there's always somebody worse than me. I didn't hold. I didn't. I, I didn't go down the street and, and hold up the bank, etc. Because there's all these bad people. I'm not as bad as them, right? But uh, he thinketh he, uh, he might trust in the flesh more. He circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin. You know, uh, is God a respecter of person? God, God is no respecter. We're respecters of persons. God is no respecter of persons. Benjamin, in Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, he is blameless. So his conscience was a good conscience before he saved. But then he's got to realize just how wicked he is in order to be saved. Uh, Paul's conscience for his entire life. 2 Timothy 1 3. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembered remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Uh, uh, whom I serve from my forefathers, you know, from the beginning. With pure conscience. He had a good conscience his entire life. Uh, by the way, these abortions, do they change? They do? Uh, who is that? Is it Madame O'Hare? What's her name? Madame O'Hare. Is that what was she? She was the one that got prayer out of school. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And she changed. Now, I'm, not no. saying, I'm not saying she got saved. I don't know what her, her, her son was. got saved. Her son got saved. All right. Folks, people can change. All right. Then uh, what is ultimately the sin that sends you to hell? Unbelief. Unbelief, folks. Unbelief. Abortion ain't going to send you to hell. But not believing and trusting Jesus sends a man to hell. <coughs> False conscience, excuse me, after salvation. Acts 24. Acts 24, verses 15, 14, and 16. This I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, If they call you a heretic, thank you. If they call you a heretic, is that a good thing or a bad thing? It depends who's calling. You. It depends. Because we have to read the rest of the verses. I'm pretty sure I, I remember what it says in there. If they, if they call you a heretic, that could be a good thing. That's a compliment. But if you're going to be doing a Ouija board, and you're a heretic, you're, that's a bad thing. Okay? So what does it say there? It, it depends. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things that are written in the law and in the prophets, believing all these things that are in this book. And have hope toward God, which they themselves also also allow that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. This is his conscience after salvation. 
Now it says to believe all things that are in, let's see, all things in the law and the prophets. Now remember, at this time, they don't have the New Testament, they have the Old Testament. Is everything in the law and the prophets in effect today? No. So uh, you can believe in some of this, or practice some of the Old Testament, but you're a heretic. I mean, you're, you're not. Uh, what, what are those Hebrews to sacrifice? What are they to sacrifice? There could be a couple of things. Three things. A lamb. Uh, if you're poor, that's Mary. She was poor. Two turtle doves, pigeons, two turtle doves. What was another one? Oil and wine. I mean, the flower. There was another animal. Uh, oh, a heifer. Yeah, the, an ox. Give me another one. Remember they laid the hands on the head of the one? A goat. There was the one goat they killed, and the other goat was the scapegoat. They would confess all the sins, put on the scapegoat, and then the, he goes off in the wilderness, cry to die. That's why Jesus leads. He's, he's, he is... All, all these are Jesus. All these things in the Old Testament. That's why he leaves the city to be crucified outside the city because he becomes the scapegoat taking our sins away. He can't be crucified in the city. It's outside the city. Alright, all these types that are in the Old Testament but folks, we're not we're not sacrificing blood anymore, right? It, it only lasted up to till Jesus came. All right. One needs first to get saved in order to have a good conscience. Ten Hebrews ten. Go to Hebrews ten verse twenty two. <clears throat> ten twenty two. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled. From an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. All right, so we are sprinkled by the blood of Christ away from this evil conscience in order to have a good conscience. Hebrews 5. Hebrews 5, 14. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern. Your conscience discerns what good and evil. So the word of God, the strong meat. What what is what is the word of God like unto? Give me some uh, illustrations. It's like an unto water. It's like an unto honey. It's like an unto angels' food. Give me some other strong meat. Huh? Milk. Milk. Yes. This is your the word. Right? There's like eight of them. Pardon? No, that, that, that's at the uh, Passover, and, and that all has something to do with the uh, uh, suffering of Christ. Rain? Pardon? Rain? All of the rain? No. It, it does dew. fall. It's distilled like drops of rain to around 32. Morning dew? I already said honey. I can't think of another one. Pardon? No. The Holy Spirit's like it. Uh, I can't think of it. I only came up with five. There's like eight of them. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> Obeying God's word will maintain a good conscience. Don't, don't you like to always have a good conscience? And we're going to end there today. Go to 1 Timothy. It will line up with our sermon today. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 5 and 9. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart, out of a good conscience, and a faith unfeigned. All right, the commandment, charity, obeying God's word. Verse 19, holding faith in a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck. You don't obey the word of God. 
Listen, in the Bible, in old timers, when they preach, they use these illustrations. It's biblical, these Old Testament illustrations. How many here own a boat for boat sailing or shipping? You don't. You don't. When modern preachers use other uh, illustrations to make a connection with younger people, what young person doesn't know any doesn't know what shipwreck means? When all young people even you, you think you think that a young person might not know what it means to be shipwrecked? I guess if you experience it once you really know it. But they ought to know what it means to be shipwrecked. Where did the ship end up? Up on the rocks. If, it, if I was sailing the ship and, and you had to keep it off the uh, off the break wall, where are we ending up? We're ending up on Channel Islands. That's where we're ending up. And shipwreck. But by obeying the word of God, you avoid becoming shipwreck. You go against this, against your conscience. You will end up shipwreck. And you want to avoid doing that. All right, Father, bless now our preaching. Amen. Preaching is good.